I'm Tim Herbert. I am the Senior Vice President of Research and Market Intelligence for CompTIA, and I head up the research department and all of the research functions at CompTIA. CompTIA produces the Cyber States report for a number of reasons. We see the impact of technology every day. We read about incredible innovations that will soon hit the market. So we have a general understanding that technology is important, but without data, we can't really quantify the trend. We don't know how fast it's growing. We don't know how it compares to other industry sectors. So a key reason why we produce cyber states is to help users, help our members, help the press really understand the size and the shape of the tech space and the tech workforce. There are a number of different ways to think about technology. And while they are interrelated, there are two distinct components. There is the tech sector, and these are the companies that create, develop, produce, and distribute technology products. The other side of the coin is the tech workforce. And these are tech occupations found in every industry sector across the US economy. So think about technology workers that could be employed at a school, at a hospital, at a financial services firm, and so forth. The tech sector, as you would expect, is the largest employer of tech occupation. One of the key trends from 2015 is the 3% growth, uh, which is pretty notable since that's the highest growth rate that we've experienced in the tech sector in over a decade. And this growth is not limited to just a few key states, but it's really broad-based. We found growth in 45 states, meaning that they added new tech sector workers compared to 2014. And as you would expect, uh, growth is highly correlated with the size of the state. So some of the bigger states experience the most growth in terms of adding workers. Uh, California, Texas, Florida, Massachusetts, they all added significant numbers of new workers. But there's a number of ways that you can look at the impact of the trend year over year. If you look at it on a percent change basis, you do see a few new states added to the mix. Uh, Utah, Idaho, North Carolina, on a percent change basis, they had some of the fastest growth rates, meaning that they were adding new workers uh, in some area of technology, whether it was IT services or software or manufacturing. And then there's also ways to look at the impact of tech when you drill down into some of these specific sectors. So when you look specifically at the internet services sector, uh, you do see a few new players as well. And again, on a percent change basis, not a numerical basis, but on a percent change basis, uh, states such as Ohio and Louisiana and Indiana, for example, uh, states that you may not necessarily think of, uh, they added uh, more workers on a percent change basis. And, and some of them are starting from a, a, a relatively small amount of workers, but uh, it is notable that they are growing and uh, they are uh, adding workers and it's impacting their economies. Certainly, if we look back on 2015, there were a number of positives on the economic front. Unemployment continues to diminish, consumer spending is reasonably strong. Uh, a number of other uh, economic factors point to a generally healthy economy. And, and certainly, there has been some turmoil with the stock market and other growth factors uh, at the start of 2016. But uh, certainly, like any sector operating in the US economy, when performance is high, certainly that translates to increased demand for technology products, and that translates to additional growth within uh, technology companies. And, and then the other key factor is simply the amount of innovation that we've had over the past five years. Uh, there are many new uh, categories of products, uh, new ways for companies to utilize technology, and, and this is driving growth as well. Simply, there's demand both from large corporations, but also this is trickled down to medium-sized companies and small businesses as well. There are a couple of different ways that cyber states gauges the economic impact of the tech sector. And typically, you can categorize these as either employment-based 
or monetary based. So simply looking at the number employed across the tech sector, that uh, is a pretty good proxy for the economic impact. So beyond just the sheer number of workers, we also look at average tech wages. And compared to the overall private sector wage, the average wage in the tech sector is about double. So it's about $105,000 uh, in 2015. And of course, we have to remember that with any average, there are high uh, figures that can pull the number up, uh, as well as figures on the lower end that, that could push that number down. But on average, uh, the wage is about double. Uh, some of the other ways that we gauge impact is uh, through monetary factors. And, and typically, we think about that in terms of sales or the revenue generated from technology products and services. And overall, the tech sector, it accounts for about 7.1% of overall economic activity in the United States. And in some states, it's even much higher. For example, in Oregon, it's about 20% of their overall economy is attributed to technology. And this is a direct impact. Of course, there are many indirect impacts and, and uh, downstream impacts in terms of increased productivity, uh, greater satisfaction, improved quality of life, and, and so forth. But, but overall, we look at uh, a number of different metrics. Uh, and in most cases, technology has a, a pretty incredible impact on the US economy. Some of the metrics we use to help uh, assess the future outlook of technology include uh, job postings. So it's important to understand what is employer demand and what does the pipeline look like for tech talent. And, and one of the, the key figures that we track is the number of job postings for both tech sector workers and then also tech occupations. And in Q4 2015, compared to Q4 2014, the number of postings grew by over 30%, so a pretty significant jump. And this is really just a signal of ongoing uh, demand for tech talent of all types. Some of the areas that experience the strongest growth include software developers, uh, cybersecurity professionals, data professionals, and then also categories that sometimes are overlooked. Uh, IT support specialists, for example. Uh, as we continue to add more devices, more platforms, more operating systems, there continues to be strong demand for workers that can support and ensure that, that workers have devices that are running the way they should. The IT services sector is the largest category within the tech sector. It accounts for about one third of all employment within the technology space. And there are a few subcomponents within IT services. The largest category is directly connected to the growth of a number of key macro trends. Uh, for example, cloud computing has been the most significant trend over the past five years. And as businesses continue to migrate many of their on-premise uh, infrastructure, on-premise applications to the cloud, they need skilled IT professionals that can help with deployment, integration, customization, management, and so forth. So that's one of the key drivers. And many of the company types that fall under the IT services umbrella include integrators, managed service providers, solution providers, VARs, consultants, and so forth. So it's really a pretty broad, diverse category. Beyond cloud, though, certainly businesses and customers of, of different types, they are increasingly adopting mobile capabilities. They're adopting business process automation capabilities, data capabilities. And in the backdrop sits cybersecurity. Uh, more endpoints, uh, more uh, uh, exposure to risk of all types, certainly they need additional expertise to help manage the risk to safeguard the organization. So a number of these, these factors are the contributors to why IT services has grown so much over the past five years, and, and the outlook looks uh, to be strong as well.